Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That being the case, who would uh, like to make the respective cases? I just had a few uh, questions and I delivered that by email earlier <clears throat> this afternoon and I think um, Brian responded and had a chance. But I'd like to clear up the second proposal that came in um, just so it's on record. So we received this today. Is, by the way, is this the second this proposal from the future CGI. of town village Johnson revised proposal for a municipal merger study? Yes. Oh, okay. Said Doc. So I was asking for a clarification on how or who or if anybody on the trustees or the select board, village manager, town manager have reached out to CDR to ask for a revised proposal. That was my first question. Um, unrelated to the answer of that being a yes or a no, um, I was curious on when we actually got the document. I'm looking for a date. Who received it? I'm looking for a name. And then when the notification went out to the village and town and the village manager. So I'm just trying to get those points clarified before I even comment on the three proposals. You know, speaking for myself, I learned the same point at the same time you did. So I'm, I guess Brian will have to fill in those gaps. Yeah, uh, we didn't solicit anything. Um, there was a conversation that the select board had requested with CGR about uh, some more details with them before our first joint meeting uh, that the Meredith and the trustees were informed of, of that conversation. That's been the only conversation we've had with CGR. And to my knowledge, the village hasn't had any. Yeah. Uh, so I, I believe that that prior conversation that you were informed of is the only contact we've had with them. Um, we received this uh, later on Friday afternoon after I had left and I had sent it to the, I informed Meredith of it that as soon as I caught up with my email and I got to this, I uh, informed Meredith and uh, shortly after informing Meredith I sent copies to the both boards. Okay, so is that today or Monday? Uh, today. For Meredith as well? Yes. Okay. Just well, I just hang on for a second. Was there a follow-up to that? Uh, no, I just wanted to okay. sit around the record. It, it oh. sounded like yeah. you might want to follow up. Yeah. Okay. So I'm wondering then if we would love, want, like to address the three points that the trustees proposed um, and what the thoughts are from the select board. The first one being, what amount of money has the town got available? Um, I believe our consultant line item is ten thousand uh, dollars. Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. Um, do we have any of that committed already for something? We have the majority. I don't know if I say the majority, but we. I would expect a sizable contribution of that to go to. Uh, the final engineering project for the uh, Light Industrial Park. Although we have not received the <coughs> grant that we will require to fund the rest of that project. Okay. So we don't have any specific earmark line item for this? No, not for this specifically. We have our consulting services which we can afford, uh, I, I said that we estimated uh, close to between four and six thousand uh, dollars for this and that would still leave us a little bit of a cushion for unexpected consulting services that we might need. 
and pay for our match of the final engineering project for the Lane Industry. So I, I hear you say four to six thousand range. That that's okay. during our budget discussions, that was kind of what we were targeting for this. Okay. So that's for the that's for the merger vote. Yes. Okay. Uh, the second item was with that new number asking all the three uh, proposals to revise their uh, right. Yeah. At, at the last joint meeting, we, at the trustee side, we rejected all three proposals because all three of over we felt with the budget and allocated the money what was presented to the village and town holders at the respective meetings. We want to give all three a, a fair chance to give another RRP. I look for input from the select board, maybe um, their thoughts on that. Well, <clears throat> my thought is that there is only one of them whose expertise I would really recognize, and I think it would be spinning our wheels and would not be getting uh, a product enlightening enough to, that we, to be useful. So I would not solicit, and I think we'd be wasting time to solicit from any other body other than the CGR. Listening to all of this uh, past couple of meetings, uh, I think it would be safe to say that majority think that the high price proposal would give us the best information. Uh, it's quite obvious that we do not have $32,000 for this study. Uh, the village has been capped at $4,000. Uh, the town is only has available between four and six thousand. So we're very, very short uh, of a good study. Uh, so I guess my proposal uh, would be, or my thoughts would be, that if we can't have uh, a decent proposal, uh, then we probably shouldn't have anything at all. And that uh, we either go back to the voters and tell them that uh, we tried to uh, have a merger study, but it came, it came to the conclusion that it would be cost prohibitive unless they gave us uh, a go-ahead to expend $28,000 of town money uh, to go ahead with this study. So unless that happens, I, I guess I'm not going to support a thing, and I think we need to drop the whole process. Yeah, I um, looked back over all the and I'm also feeling like we should just be really honest with the voters and say, you know, this that um, we we had no idea this was going to cost as much as it is, and that um, rather than spending ten or twelve thousand on something that's not going to give us the results we're looking for or the, the the information we're looking for that we should, um, yeah, we should go back to the drawing board and either get more money or or see what the voters have to say. At all. Uh, I guess the point I, I I haven't had a chance to look at the, the new document we received this afternoon, but um, between these two, we do have two proposals that are less than ten thousand dollars which were the two highest rated proposals. This one's not in as much detail, but um, it is from the, the person on CGR staff with the urban planning faculty. So the, the most expensive proposal, if we, we substitute this new CGR one for the old one, 
Um, the, at this point, the most expensive proposal is the least scoring. So, say the last part again, the least though. Uh, the, since this new CGR proposal is for $10,000. Say so which one's the, the, the least expensive is the least scoring, is what you say. The most expensive is the least scoring, the one from Ascent. Okay, so that one is. Um, just an, a, an out of the box thought. When the planning commission had a study they wanted to have done and they didn't have the money um, or funds for it, um, they put it out to different colleges. I think this was going to involve sell the idea. And I don't know what quality of work you'd get, but since it would be for free, it's an idea that you could throw out to you know UVM, Northern Vermont University, some different things that um, might apply to a certain aspect of their college studies and ask as a project for students to complete it and possibly get some different eyes on an objectivity. Possibly not, but it's an idea that would be free. Okay. Um, that, that is an idea that we've kicked around before. I think, Nick, Brian, can you speak to what we Sure. Done because you've had, you've been in contact with the colleges yeah. on that. Uh, UVM, uh, I would, I completed my master's in public administration at UVM, and we participated at that program. We participated in a similar project uh, for the town of Waterbury, and they've done prior work for the town of Kaluski. It, it's a uh, the city of Kaluski. It, it's pretty common practice there for their graduate program. Uh, I've spoken to the uh, the dean of that school, uh, the head of the program, and a few other individuals, and there's interest there in working with us on this. Uh, but it would not be the same scope of work. We would have to write a, a different scope of work and work with we have to work within their time frame of when the students are available and doing working on this project. We would have to alter the scope of work a little bit to make it coincide with their uh, academic requirements, which would require, I just, I don't know what that would require. Um, we would have to work more closely with uh, their program administration, and we just, without some support for that idea, it hasn't been worth it to really delve that far into it. So I don't know what change of the scope of work is going to need, but I don't think that they would complete this scope of work for us. The thing that crosses my mind is you said you didn't know as they would produce, I'm speaking to Kyle, that uh, you was going to, would come back and ask for a different thing. What do you want is my question. Do you know what you want to ask for? I just, uh, if we can't take a Harvard graduate's thing, his, re his report on it, why are we going to do with students that are learning? That's my idea, not hers. Thank you, Barry. That was my idea, not hers. I know it is, but you, we were talking about it. And that's what we were talking about. We were talking about what the old students can think. You've got the you've got a you've got a uh, Harvard graduate that wants to do this for for nine thousand dollars, and I I think he knows what you want, and I think he's probably done it enough so he could give us something to start with. Um, I don't remember the exact conversation you're talking about, but um, no, you were just saying that you. Excuse me, you asked her a question. Yeah, okay. Um, speaking back to why I'm not comfortable with any of these proposals, I, just because someone goes, in my mind, just because someone goes to Harvard doesn't mean that they're an expert in everything. I, I, 
their education. It, it's more about their experience with being able to do a, a the study that we want. And I don't feel like uh, these proposals are able to do that, <laughs> regardless of where they go to school. <laughs> I, I'd like to pose a question to you, Brian or Meredith. Uh, I think everybody was happy or thought that CGR would give us a good product. Uh, I, think, I don't think that was any question. It was just the, the bottom line, the cost. They've come in with a, a second proposal, although unsolicited, they did come in with it uh, for a third of the price. Have either one of you done a comparative analysis on okay, what are we not going to get with this that they were proposing to do with the $32,000? I mean, just skimming through it, it looks like uh, the second proposal is pretty in inclusive of, of everything that we would be looking for, but if either one of you looked at it. I have not. I, I read through it quickly before I left the office. Um, I mean, it seems like they're saying that um, specific governance issues and deliberation of a specific charter change of a charter language should not be rushed. So I took from that that that's not something that they were going to include in this one that they maybe would have in the more expensive proposal. Um, but I have not done a really detailed comparison. I think in our little special trustee meeting we had last week, we looked a little bit more closely at the Seminole Hill proposal where we talked about the actual number of hours we would spend on the project. And I think we, you know, they talk about two, uh, two days of a site visit, but they don't really talk about the other time that their staff will be spending when they're not here. So I think for an apples to apples comparison, we would want to know how many hours of, you know, time in their staff are we getting compared to the other ones. We need a little more detail. <coughs> Uh, that's basically, yeah, the, the, and they say that the way that they're saving money is that they're reducing the amount of time they're going to spend on site, uh, but they don't say how much time they're going to spend when they're not on site. Um, I don't believe that this is going to include the comparisons that we liked, and I don't think it's going to go as far for uh, any kind of next step or you know, we said we wanted pretty limited analysis or conclusions. I don't remember the exact language we settled on in the RFP off the top of my head, but I wouldn't expect this to go there at all. I think it's really just going to be the, you know, some basic questions and existing conditions. Uh, no, I don't think they're going to go very far into any analysis or conclusions, like I said, they're going to be leaving out comparisons uh, to other municipalities and some other things that we had said they want. I just looked at this very quickly. And to me, this is thrown together on Friday afternoon, and I don't think it's very professional the way they've done it to, to offer a first thing when Brian and the director from the select board asked them to if they would be willing to uh, resubmit a proposal. And correct me if I'm wrong, right? They said, no, we don't want to bid against ourselves. And then just before we have a meeting, oh, by the way, we're going to have another proposal for two-thirds of the cost less. And there's no time frame on when they're going to start or when they're going to be done. I think it's kind of incomplete. And even on a $32,000, although it was in their comments that if we were going to go further with a study, we would contract with them. Then there's a, they didn't say a dollar amount. I'm guessing there's another twenty or thirty thousand, and that doesn't count any legal fees. So we're going to be up around fifty to hundred thousand dollars if the voters keep saying yes to continue. I'd rather see us spend nine or ten thousand dollars for not a CPA, but a, that's not the right term. But somebody's got some knowledge to come up and say, here's a down and dirty, here's a plan for nine or ten thousand. This makes sense to use your advantage and the disadvantages financially and maybe operational. If the vote is yes, then you have to continue the next step, and that's when you get into a very detailed study. That's my two cents worth. Go ahead. This uh, updated merger study proposal is an 11th hour deal here, and uh, this is actually the first time I've seen it. 
I have not been on my email today. Uh, I guess if I realized that something that important was going to be there, I would have, I would have got to a computer and got onto it. But just looking at the updated proposal, it it kind of bothers me in the sense of the term that the original proposal was going to take about six months to do this and charge thirty-two thousand. So. The only days I see in the new update is two. So granted, there's going to be more time than, than two days, but they're going from six months at 32,000 to two days at 10,000. Unsolicited, as far as I know, correct? In the conversation we had with them earlier, we didn't solicit specifically a new proposal, but the direction from the select board was at the end of their original proposal, I don't remember the phrase exactly, but they had something in there about, you know, that they'd be willing to discuss uh, alternatives. So I opened up the conversation with them about what some of those alternatives might look at, and that was when we had the conversation that they didn't want to bid against themselves. I imagine, not having spoken to them, but I imagine they probably read our minutes and could see from the meeting of the minutes of the last meeting that we weren't going to go with their proposal. Well, if they could have given us a, uh, uh, a study for 10,000, they should have given it to us in the first place. So <clears throat> I just have an idea, and it was noted in what the trustees came up with. And for last meeting we had on this topic, and even with this meeting, I hear a lot of, I believe, I think, I'm not sure, and I, I don't think it's a, a proper way to judge somebody's work, whether it be expertise, the study itself, funding. What I would like to do, and we've done this before on the cybersecurity folks, if we like this a group, is we have them show up. And I know a lot of these folks don't live local, but there is you know, the IT world where we can Skype somebody in. And we have an open dialogue with our questions to each of the three to get a better idea of what they can offer for this kind of cash, what their experience level is, and what they can do for it at end of it. But I just think trying to do a merge one between you know, 125 years worth of agreement between the town and the village to boil it down to I think and I believe and I guess it, it doesn't sit well with me. Quite frankly, I'm not willing to vote for any of this unless I can actually have a conversation with the folks who propose these documents. Um, it may take a little bit longer. It can be done on a single basis. It can be done with a trio of all three but I think it's worth it. Um, and I do want to hear from the other two, even though that there's some people um, on this group uh, who believe that they don't have the experience to conduct such work. That's it. Just, just to say, I, I don't want to let that die. Is there a response from over here to that? Yeah. Scott, I guess I'm with the cyber folks. We had them all sit in front of us because we thought they were all really good candidates, mm -hmm. and it was hard to figure out which was the best. So right. having a conversation about, you know, more about the, the um, getting more of a sense of who they were um, was really important. I guess I'm wondering with this, what they, what you're hoping they could say to make us feel like they're more qualified that wouldn't already be present on their resume. Yeah, what I'm looking for is our vocabulary to come out of both words, not as I think and, you know, I'm not sure, but I think this is what they can do or what they can't do. I, I really want that firmed up um, so I can make a more decision. And if I'm not happy with the comments that are made, then I feel like I strongly make a pitch saying all three aren't really doing it for me. Um, and I can represent the village folks a little bit more. Um, 
better information. Right now, I think if anybody asking on the street um, within the village, well, what's the deal? How can we get to pick one? I'd actually have to revert back to I think, and I, I don't want to do that. I'd rather have a firm response. And if they're not willing to do it, so be it. Um, what I'm certain worried about is if we tell all three no, um, are we doing a disservice to the taxpayers who asked us to do this type of study? Because we don't really have a good formula going forward, except for spending more money and possibly getting um, CGR or an equivalent company to step up to the plate. I just don't want to burn bridges along the way where we end up with absolutely nothing. I was just after rereading these, all so substituting out the new CGR proposal for the old one, all three of them are the same in regards to how many hours they would spend here. All three proposals say two days doing interviews with people from Ascent to CGR to Stedman. They're all the same in that regard. The difference would just be the back end time on their own. Um, and then also, just so everyone remembers, um, Ascent said they, they're under contract right now to do one of these studies in Maine. Um, Stedman doesn't have any specific experience in studying emerging municipalities and um, Emergency services and CGR referenced um, six dozen of these studies over the last six years, 12 years. So it's kind of a, they're all the same as the rest of you. Okay, time spent here. Yeah. Doug, sorry. Um, are, are you, are you, yeah. are you finished? Yeah, you finished? Sorry, I interrupted you. It's fine. Yeah. If we have a interview or if we have a uh, you know, electronic or face-to-face -face interview we and we start saying I know because you're still in the I think thing I don't think I don't think that that makes uh, if you have sufficient information with the, with the resume I, you know, I think we can call it out I think the problem is that we had uh, three you know, I thought one was unacceptable because it was too high, but highly qualified. The others, I, I wouldn't choose to, to do. And now we have a uh, proposal from a qualified uh, agency that might not be sufficient for our purposes. That's what I think we are. Oh, sure. Can I ask what what made them unqualified? The two that you're saying are unqualified. It, they don't have experience in this area. Their experience is in other areas. They have not done this particular. They may be highly intelligent, highly qualified in other areas. But when I read those the last time around, it uh, as soon as I finished it, I said, uh-uh. I thought you didn't. You just say what? that they did. No, no, yeah. Well, that's. Well, sorry. But he was the one who gave this platform. Yeah, that's, that's fine. But okay. as soon as we start getting right. into the rapid fire, uh, we're going to lose control here. So my understanding, the floor, my understanding from the, those facts was that they had experience doing that. But that's why I was questioning. Doctor, do you want to respond to that? Your understanding isn't at all. If I was a hiring person, how I would call it. Kim, so no, sorry, what I, maybe I wasn't clear. What I was trying to say is, so the the, the lowest scoring of our of our three was this ascent. They do have a contract, according to the, according to their information, to do one of these to do one of these. It'd be their first study. Stedman Hill, which was our second highest scoring, has not done any of these, although he has experience in transportation regional planning. And then the highest scoring one of these based on their more expensive proposal, does these frequently. So that's, I believe, where Doug was going. You got them reversed. I think you reversed them. Did he? I thought he said Ascent had the, the lowest. They did. Oh, that's right. Okay. 
Yeah. 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 So I guess my question would be, is if, if we're sort of comparing apples to apples now as far as the amount of time they're going to spend in the town uh, and the cost that each one of them is proposing are in the same neighborhood, <coughs> one has you know, outstanding with the amount of experience they have versus the other two why wouldn't we just go with CGR? I just wonder, is this fair for the other two? Because for one of them to kind of sneak in under the deadline of submitting another one, even though they're the most qualified, are we? Is this a not bid rigging, but this kind of unfair practice of somebody sneaks one in underneath, read the minutes, and they are they do have a lot of qualification. But is that fair for the other two? I don't. To me, it smells a little bit where someone sticks gets in at the just before the last hour. And I don't. Me. To me, that would be more qualifying because they're paying attention. You know, we don't know if the other two are, if they already wrote us off the radar. You know, if they're reading our minutes as we go along through the process. Do, do I gather a sense here that at least one of these three outfits is is acceptable under some circumstances to being called upon to do this, or is there a wholesale rejection of all of them for one reason or another? It could be lack of experience, could be too much money, could be uncertainty as to what they're going to do. Uh, is there anybody who thinks all three are disqualified for any reason? Well, that seems to be step one. Uh, I, I am uncertain I would need more information from CGR about the other time and analysis that they would spend in order to evaluate that proposal. But you, you wouldn't, under all circumstances, knowing what you know, disqualify them. So if everybody who's in on this decision agrees that, possibly subject to some more information gathering, which is I think what you were talking about, Scott, that at least one of these people ought to be at least qualified and have a bid number that is arguably acceptable to take the next step toward fulfilling an obligation all you folks have based upon what your meetings have asked you to do with regard to merger. Is that fair? Huh? Yeah, I, I'm going to say that unless we contact all three, I will not vote for any. Okay, you're not, you're not, again, my question is not, you know, how you end up picking it, it's a, a question of do you all agree that there's somebody in here who can probably do it at a price that you can live with? Oh, I don't doubt with what any of the three can do. All right, okay. But so unless I we do it fair. Yeah, no, I'm not arguing that point with you. Okay. I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to take some baby steps here mm -hmm. to try to get you focused on what you're supposed to be doing, at least according to the mandates that your meetings, you know, the village meeting, the town meeting, have given you collectively. So one of, one of the points I'd love to make, to be fair to all three companies, um, and, and I think from what I'm hearing, and I'm not sure what the dialogue was with the town talking to CGR, but it was based on price, it was the bulk of the conversation, I take it, right? Yes. Okay. So we gave CGR that feedback, and Doug, you've been very 
firm in your belief that Stedman Hill, in a sense, doesn't have the qualified individual or individuals um, to do this type of review. And that's great. Um, but what I would like to ask is that, as Bob has said, reach out to the other two and let them know we're not satisfied with their talent unless they can bring somebody on as a liaison or somebody on their staff that they're willing to contract with that we can't go with. And I think that's being <clears throat> extremely fair with the other two. And I have worked for private consultants in the past, and when we were lacking talent within our within those firms, we hired out. And it's something that happens often in the consulting world. And you need that expertise. You can't necessarily have these staff as full-time equivalents. You bring them in when you need them. And if they can't, no big deal, we've asked. And if they said, no, we're not willing to do that, then I'm willing to move on. But I think to be fair to all three bidders, um, it's an easy question. It's a phone call. We like the scope of work. I really like the scope of work that Stedman Hill has. Looking at this individual's background, um, education, you know, it's, it's there. He has done complicated work working with utilities, which is no easy task. With mergers? No, he hasn't done anything with a merger. But would they be willing to hire somebody on to take that role? And if they're not, we can push them aside. And the same with the Senate. I think out of fairness, it's something that should be looked at. And then, like I said, we don't have to do a Skype call. We don't have to do, you know, um, a Zoom call. We can just simply pick up the phone and ask that question. You did it for CDR based on cost. And these are things we've been tripping on since we've gotten these three documents. People have views on background levels and their ability to do the work. Some of these are a little vague in what their protocol will be for the review. CGR had a, a really good document when they first started out with an extremely high price. Now I'm seeing it reduced down to a two-pager, barely. So is my scope of work completely out the window with this? I don't know, but that's a question that we can move forward on. I, I don't see what the big deal is. It's, it's a phone call. Would you be willing to hire somebody on on a contractual basis or bring somebody in that has the background that we're looking for because you don't have it right now? It's an easy phone call. And again, working for consulting firms in the past, it was something that we did often. So, <clears throat> I'm hearing about fairness. I'm concerned with our legal requirement. Um, I'm concerned with, you know, if we in this request for proposal process are outside of the bounds, then of where we should be, then I think that, that that's something that, that uh, perhaps we could, should consider. Um, I think that fairness is uh, if it's not within you know if we're within our legal bounds and moving ahead. I think valuing our time. Uh, of everyone here that we should move ahead. Um, the, you know, I am concerned that the CGR proposal will prove to be inadequate. You know, then, you know, I, I can understand, you know, then I'm hearing you. Um, I don't know what exactly, you know, I have the fairness thing, which I don't think is, is, is as important as, as whether or not uh, we can just move ahead, but on the other hand, uh, it could be that somebody might bring something. So I, you know, you're, I'm conflicted over it, but I don't want to spend all sorts of time spinning our wheels. If I could just reply, you've already sort of done a conflict by reaching out to one consultant based on price, and not reached out to the other two consultants based on background. Well, is that a is that a uh, conflict that is, you know, have we exposed the town and the village or the town by doing that in terms of the breach of the protocol process? Uh, I understood that discussion 
you know, took place before we had our meeting, and this came in unsolicited to you. So I don't know. This is not an area that I that I you know in practice. In. But I <clears throat> wonder what fairness is. If fairness is the guiding principle, fairness to them, I think we have to be legally appropriate to them. To move this process along. I'm going to go back to the three points that I raised earlier. Number one, it looks like the select board has come up with an estimate of four to six thousand, so that's one hurdle out of the way. And I still like to go back to the what Scott keeps keep saying is give all three consultants a chance. Maybe one or two will, will not resubmit, and then that'll be a real no-brainer. They're they're out of the picture. And then just come up with some questions or something with the interviews between who is remaining of the three, so that if we move forward with a vote, whether it's Five, five and five to zero, or three to two, that we can all feel confident. We went through the process. We did the best we could to pick the best one for the money. And it's not, wait, if we do this, it's not saying no to any one of the three, and it's not saying yes to any one of the three. It's giving them all equal time and give them a certain time frame, let Brian and Meredith work on it, and let's come back for the results, get them to everybody ahead of time, and let's pound it out and let's do something. Ball comes back over here as to what's the downside of what was just said. It's time to crap or get off the pot. And uh, I think the select board should agree with the trustees. Uh, it's not unreasonable what they have as a proposal. Probably it's not going to do any hurt. And I think that. We should go along with the trustees and uh, move this forward. Because if we don't, it's just going to be bumping heads and we're not going to get a thing accomplished. In, in, that, yeah, rear, I need a rear view in, in that in that possibility, <clears throat> it sounds like possibly all of you could also put in the questions that you have. So equally, hopefully, everyone can get the information that they're looking for. How many hours, you could compare hours, to, which is apples to apples. So how many hours were you thinking about for each thing? And you know, how, any other questions that were lingering? Can you get extra people? So to piggyback on what she's saying, if we're going to go back to them all, I agree we should line up specific questions for them all each to answer. You've all said 16 hours here interviewing people. How many hours do you expect analyzing and drawing up your report? We could also bring to their attention the weaknesses that we've identified with each of the proposals, but we could send them all essentially a package, a list of questions that we could come up with. Um, so just one, going back out to them once, you know, it may be a tough draw to get them to, to, to get them in one place to ask them a question or even line them up over the phone. But if we had specific questions, um, we could you could do it all in one format, I believe. Uh, you know, we're concerned about your cost. We're concerned about your experience. Oh, and how many hours do you plan to spend on this, this, and this? Or you know. Which, of course, would require a committee to draft the questions. The questions will not descend from the sky. But it wasn't clear to me when Mike is saying we ought to just agree if we were talking about agreeing with Scott or agreeing with the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the minutes uh, or, or the, the letter that Meredith had sent them. I'm, I'm much more favorable to. Scott's idea of inquiring whether they can bring someone on than I am to to let's go back and everybody ask everyone to address these things. Yeah, I would I can I okay. Go ahead. Um, I apologize. No, no, go ahead. You, you haven't spoken. <laughs> I would back that up a piece not to say, are you willing to bring someone on, but how are you willing to address your uh, lack of experience mm -hmm. and not give them the the answer. It's probably a small point going to exactly the wordsmithing of the questions we're going to ask that aren't going to fall from the scraps. Yeah. 
Not just for my thing, get you out. Yeah, I was just going to say some of these questions are a neat point if they can't bring someone on that's got experience. So maybe ask that first and then see who's left. I would just say that I, I do think if we're going to go back with that question, we do need to tell them some dollar figure because um, the cent is still 9000 over. Um, you know, they weren't under or within budget either. So I think if we're going to go back and say, can you bring somebody on with them, we'd also need to say, and also bring your cost down. For Stedman Hill, you could spend, you know, about another $1,000. Could you bring somebody on for that? So I, I do think the price component does have to be communicated to each of them yeah. as part of those conversations. I would agree with that. Yeah. So, if I may, would it would it not be a series of questions then, but a series of, of statements to say it, our evaluation is this? Our concerns are on price, our concerns are on experience, our concerns are on X, Y, and Z things that we've mentioned, and, and not necessarily questions, but declarations and say the question is how would you address these and, and strengthen your proposal within this budget. Does that make sense? Yeah, and just to phrase the question that we're looking for talent who has background, proven background in village town mergers, to make it specific. And, and that's very clear. And, and I think that's what I'm looking for at this point, is clarity. And if the other two say, no, we're not willing to do that, it's an easy toss. And then we can wrap our heads around CGR and your new proposal, and if that's going to be adequate for our needs, I think that's a separate conversation. And that I would want people from CGR on the telephone or in person to have specific questions um, asked. Because I, I just think it's too much of an important topic um, for both the village and the town um, to not do that. If we're, <clears throat> we're contemplating sending something out to all three, um, um, I gather... It's just a phone call. Okay. Um, but so the CGR conversation wouldn't be, you know, uh, we're, you're short of it, or you think you're short, what, what could you do? Um, what, what, what is our conversation with them? That's a great question. Correct, same thing as the other one. I'm not really sure. Uh, from, we can go right down the line and, and get a feel for it if you want, real quick, with everybody who's present since we're all here. I think we had some questions. That, you know, this proposal was you know a lot shorter than the last one. There were a lot of specifics left out. I think a specific question is how much time are you going to spend off-site? You know, to develop this report. Okay. Um, and is that important to know? Body on the trustees agreeing to that? Well, we don't have that information from. The only person who gave us detailed hour information was Stedman. Correct. So Ascent and CGR, we don't have. So we'd get detailed. We don't have, so we'd, have two, we'd have two of the three with detailed hourly information. We don't have that from Ascent. I think we should. My opinion is we should ask that of all of them. So we have something, could, you know, things we can actually really compare. But for what I'm hearing on this side, which I do agree with, the save time, if they're not willing to hire on um, somebody with that village town merger, it's not even worth going down that road. Okay. It just, it'll save everybody a lot of heartache and time. If they say, yes, absolutely, we can do that, we can do it within a month, great. Then we can have that conversation. But if it's a no, there's nothing really more to talk about. We could, it seems like we have our template right here for how we would go back to them in the evaluation criteria that we initially um, gave out to them. And that was the, um, the methodology we used to score them. Um, so it seems like if we go through each of those four points with each one and say what the, what the concern on with each company. Um, but that would be a pretty simple list. Uh, that would create a question check there. 
for our statements. Assuming for the moment that what I think I'm hearing is the limited consensus around these tables <laughs> that um, hypothetically a committee of two of the most articulate people on this last aspect uh, you might agree to have uh, Nat and Scott work up a protocol for whatever contacts are being made. I, I'm not doing this. I have no power here. You guys have to deal with your own delegation of authority. Uh, I mean, it does, from where I'm sitting, and I'm not sitting where you're sitting, okay, obviously. It doesn't sound like a Herculean task to get these questions laid out or these statements laid out. But I can't make anybody do anything. And, uh, it's merely a suggestion. Yes? So the village trustees, I, I guess, have given me the nod to be the mm -hmm. person. Perhaps, perhaps person? Sure. Oh, no. I'm not looking for a nod. <laughs> I'm not, it's, we could knock that out pretty quickly. I think, so. Well, maybe they, that, you know, if they they might draw on their, their respective administrators to assist them in this, you know, as yes. we call the register, or have Donna send them in minutes. Yeah, so this, and the score, I mean, Meredith still have the scoring from mm -hmm. the last meeting. I mean, it's pretty good, so. Okay. We can do that. Do I have a sense of the will of this group? Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe we're slightly more nodding heads yet. We have a deadline, but when we want them to have an answer to this question. Right tonight. <laughs> right tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 8.15. So you trustees are in the same agreement? Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure with both boards, if any of the members have any questions, they can relate to their proper representatives and we can include everybody here at the table for their input. Right, but let but, but there not be a committee of 10. We know where that goes. All right, so. Folks, is that the, the will of the will of the group? Yes. And if that be the case, then I guess it's uh, up to somebody to start talking about the gardening plan. I'm not sure who's going to be on that. I think Mary has that. I can kick it off, sure. Um, so the village budgeted $2,500 for gardening in 2019. Um, so between, of that $2,500, we need to spend some, I believe, towards um, the beautification committee's plan for the village green. And then also for um, hiring a gardener, um, maybe Peter or you know, anybody else who's interested. Um, to do some work around um, the village at several key locations. Um, and then I believe the Beautification Committee had a budget itself um, to do some work at the Village Green. Um, I can update you briefly on that. I had a conversation with Andrea last week, um, Andrea Blaisdale, who's done up the proposal. Um, I don't believe she has the general liability insurance that we would require um, of any contractor working for the village, so I let her know that Last year, we were able to hire our gardener as a temporary part-time employee to cover that, and I think she was open to that, so hopefully we can solve that insurance issue that way. Um, she met with our foreman on site today, this afternoon, to revise the plans a little bit to work with their plowing, um, so what gets planted doesn't get hurt during the winter when things are covered up and it's dark and they're plowing. Um, so I think they've come up with a slightly revised proposal <coughs> that does include the berm, I think was uh, a little bit more expensive, uh, about $1,900 with the berm. Yeah, about 1950 um, 
So it sounds like you know our, our folks are on board with that and that we can make it work with our uh, winter plowing of that area. Um, so I think we need to figure out of that 1900, uh, from the village perspective of that 1950, uh, for the village green, how much of that we need to contribute, and then whatever's left we could put towards the gardening contractor um, for the key locations. Um, and I know one of the conversations we wanted to have here tonight is everybody agreeing on that sort of broader gardening work that's going to be done, selecting, you know, what's going to be the, lo the prioritized locations this year to give a little bit better direction to the person doing the work, um, and hopefully get some better results this year. So uh, the town had directed the beautification committee on this, and the beautification committee had planned on spending $1,000 on the village green beautification. So the project came back, you know, the town was thinking that we might be able to pay for the whole activity or, or whatever, but the, the way the plan came back, uh, plan looks good, but it's going to be more than $1,000, so about twice as much. Uh, but we still have a thousand dollars budgeted for this project and it sounds like the village might be willing to pay to make up the remaining funds um, you know so we can ask the village to do that or we can you know split it up over uh, the 2019 financial year and the 2020 financial year how much was the line item Three thousand. Three thousand. But that also included gardening and a mural, and we wanted to do uh, some flowers downtown also. How much was the mural? Uh, the mural we're budgeting a thousand dollars for that also, uh, but not all of. Uh, I think very little of that money is spent yet. So I guess what I'm getting at is. We really don't have more than a thousand dollars. Not in this financial year. If we were going to do it, we would pay for some of Andrew's materials up front, mm -hmm. and then pay for labor uh, to actually implement it in the new year. So we could buy things. We could buy the, the material now, and then actually commit the uh, construction. How much do we have left over currently in the budget? Uh, we've got, for, in beautification, we have almost nothing that isn't committed, although we do think that the mural uh, and the uh, flower baskets and other things we want to do are probably going to come in under budget. Uh, there just isn't a lot of, the mural is almost done and that one is, is probably never going to cost a thousand. Uh, the hanging baskets and other things that we had wanted to do on beautification. Um, there's not a lot of time left to think so. get them done. Two thousand dollars, I'm all for the village paying more. <laughs> Shocked. <laughs> Nothing's changed. <laughs> As a voter, again, I'm just wondering if it's been thrown out on front porch forum for whoever is in charge of this to say, hey, do we have any volunteers to bring in some flowers? We're looking for this and this and this variety, and who knows, maybe cut your costs by having people who are really excited to donate some flowers to your cause or plants to your cause. We were interested in donations, and we look for volunteers for the flower baskets around town. Uh, and some of the other things that we're going to do, we're trying to solicit, and we'll put something about it again. We, we got one volunteer last year, but the plan for the, the baskets is we were going to provide people with the watering wands, and, and if they would agree to water, you know, we put up flowers, they go out with a wand, we would provide things that they would just agree to go out with a wand and, and water. Um, that we didn't, we didn't receive a lot for that, but we you know, can resolicit and try it and go with that again. Andrew's proposal, uh, we can look for some other resources. We were talking about possibly having better sources for compost and some other things that might help bring the cost down, but her proposal is pretty specific. Uh, 
and uh, well considered for the, the shrubbery things that she wants to use are well considered for how hardy they are and how well they'll withstand the uh, the pressure that they're going to feel in that that location from salt and the being buried by the plow and other things. So I don't think that unless people had those specific plantings, it, it wouldn't be as suitable for uh, donations as like the hanging baskets. We can be pretty free about what goes in that. That answers your. Yeah, it sounds like some of the cost is maintenance, not just the materials. The maintenance is going to be. It is always the hardest part. Uh, my first comment is I I would very much prefer to have the um, beautification committee making these decisions the same way that REC makes decisions about recreation. They have their own budget. They deal with it. We don't have to discuss it. We've got a lot of important stuff to talk about. Um, so that's my first comment. Uh, my second comment is if I am going to get involved with it. Um, my highest priority would be on the um, welcome signs on either side of the village before we get involved with um, other locations in this building, um, the, the uh, landscaping around this building. Um, and also, I much prefer um, perennials and um, plants that are low maintenance as opposed to annuals. We, we had a lot of annuals last year that I thought weren't very, um, it's just you spend money on it once and you have it one year and it's gone and we've got these hanging baskets and I think we've tried hanging baskets in the past. Um, we, people in the town or village have tried it in the past. It's just been this ongoing issue of trying to keep them watered once or twice a day. It's, it's just a Herculean, Sisyphean effort. Um, so those are my comments. Um, Brian's saying he needs baskets, but we were actually discussed boxes on um, mm -hmm. bridges. On the bridges, and I was just in Quebec and in some little towns that have boxes on their bridges, and they have it that you know along rivers, and they have this great system where they draw the water up from the river, and it feeds the little basket. So that could be something that we like to think about. So you don't Oh, that'd be cool. Um, the beautification committee also talked about the annuals. I think you're talking about right um, across from the junction of Railroad Street and Route 15. I wasn't particularly talking about the uh, the welcome signs last year. Had, had oh, okay. That okay. I just thought why not for perennials there that are low maintenance and okay. they'll right. always be there even if we neglect them for a year. Okay. Well, we felt like that hatch that. Um, the piano. The piano, yes, wasn't, um, shouldn't be a priority uh, this year, but the welcome sign should, and this building should instead. And another member of the beautification committee, it, it's, uh, I think we're in agreement with you. We, you know, our first priority was the village green. Uh, we think that that is uh, central, and it, it, it's important, it's where the bikers will come and you know, we saw them having picnics on the weekend. Uh, and then we wanted to move out to the uh, Cold Spring for us, all the other stuff there. We wanted the welcome signs, we wanted this building, but we, we, we can't do everything at once. We want to do one thing and have a designer look at and Andrea provide a design of perennials for these other buildings and places. And so you know, that was the first step in towards a, a, a number of years. And then we're, the plan would be when you did that, you'd also be building, you'd be having one eye on your maintenance costs and stuff. So that's where we, you know, I, I think where we are is if we have a thousand dollars. Is there, do we have to defer Andrea or can there be money, you know, do you, does the village have money to contribute towards the $1,900 up there or, or, or not? Um, yes. Yeah. Oh, so we have a total of $2,500 to work with, um, which we intended to put towards 
Welcome Sign, Municipal Building, and um, Cold Spring. Um, so if we divert any of that 2500 to the Village Green, there's just less of that to work with. Mm -hmm. I believe the town also has, separate from the Beautification Committee, money to put towards the general guarding that would include this building and the bridges. Is that correct? Uh, I think we've been assigning that to the Beautification. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's been coming out of the Beautification budget so far. And I expect it, it will probably continue to do so. So I think, though, that we can, you know, we've got $1,000 dedicated this year. Uh, next year, for Peter's budget, I think we can match that. It doesn't give us, it doesn't give beautification a lot of uncommitted money for next year, but again, we can, the, the mural will come out of this year. Uh, and Andrea's, our contribution to Andrea can come out of this year. So uh, I think there's enough, enough there for, if we can pay those two this year, and then next year we have, we can pay Peter and uh, if Beautification has another project that they want to undertake, like the design plan or something for this building once we've completed the next three or work. So I, coming out of this meeting, I think we need to have the budget for Peter set and then an agreement on how much we're each paying for the Village Green and that way they both can move forward and Brian and I can reach out to, to Peter and communicate these are the priority areas. You know, it's already <laughs> after June 1st, we'll get started on those. And, um, so I, I think if you know the village puts in a, about a thousand towards the village green, that would leave us fifteen hundred for Peter's gardening. If that can be matched by the town, we'd have a total of three thousand, um, which is somewhat comparable, I think, to maybe a little bit more than what was spent last year. So we can hopefully get some better results. I, I think that that's right. I think it's a little bit more than we spent last year. Uh, and again, <coughs> we can also talk about priority areas. Uh, but is the select board okay with that agreement? So that'll be, uh, from my understanding of the beautification committee, beautification supports this, um, but it'll be $1,000 on the beautification's budget this year for the village green, and then $1,500 out of next year's uh, beautification budget going to gardening with Peter. I, I, if that's the recommendation of the Beautification Committee, that's, I support if that. I understand our Beautification Committee last meeting, that that was. Yes, that's, that's yeah. what I'm hearing. I, I, I don't want to second guess their, their work. Yeah. That's why we have. <clears throat> this, <clears throat> this, does this agenda item <clears throat> call upon any of you folks to actually do anything? <laughs> well, we do have one that might require a vote or at least some in consent. Um, an odd board. Ask the question. So with Peter, uh, we were, <laughs> the general consensus was that it could have gone a little bit better last year with having uh, kind of our first, I think our first year as a paid gardener. Uh, and we weren't, we felt that it could have gone better. Uh, to that end, we think that the that it was kind of a failure of management. That if we had given Peter more information about what we wanted to accomplish, uh, he would be better. He'd be able to accomplish those tasks to our satisfaction. So we'd like some agreement about what we're going to ask Peter to focus on. The recommendation from the beautification committee was. Uh, that we would focus on the two welcome signs, the municipal building, and flower boxes for the bridges. And no peanuts. Uh, no peanuts. No what? Uh, the green is a uh, separate project for now. In the future, the village green might be, we might use Peter for maintenance on the village green, but uh, the first year is going to be Plantings and everything else, and we're contracting with Andrew for that. 
So this is just for Peter's maintenance. Again, welcome signs, municipal building, and boxes for the, uh, to be specific, it's the town-owned bridges in the village. So that would be Pearl Street, School Street, and uh, uh, Railroad Street. Oh, we did that's right, not Pearl Street, because we, the, the committee thought that the uh, uh, natural landscape on, on that served perfectly well. Uh, so it would just be School Street, the Powerhouse Bridge, and right. Railroad Street. Not Street. It's not uh, town-owned, so we would have to get mixed up with the state and everything else to place things on their bridge. So let's try it on our bridges, and if it's successful, we can go to the state and ask for permission to hang baskets and do other things. But for right now, let's just try and do it on the things that we own, because we don't need anybody else's permission. Yeah, I guess I would suggest that sort of uh, tagging on that, that uh, we budgeted money for the beautification. We have a beautification committee. We've got some basic guidelines that we're looking for, but otherwise, uh, you guys manage. That's what I'm looking at. Am I wrong? So, just a question on the rear, on uh, School Street, on the covered bridge. Yeah. Yep. We used to have flower boxes on that bridge. How'd that work out? I there was a volunteer that was maintaining them, and. Uh, that there wasn't follow-up for it because it was only it was volunteer led and there wasn't any uh, staff time or anything dedicated to it. Okay. And just a reminder: this summer, fingers crossed, we're having a construction project that might be sort of ugly to see. So we'll have a beautiful covered bridge, but remember, upstream will be a pretty nasty construction site with a lot of activity. As a FYI, yeah, we do still have flower boxes on the bridge, though, so we want to reuse those. Uh, I think the village green should be the village green and the village responsibility. You can do with it as you see fit, myself. Um. The village owns it, but it's uh, the central part of the town. I understand uh, that. And uh, I think that since the goal is beautification, uh, it's, it's an ideal place to start. Um, I, I diverted me from where I was going. Um, <clears throat> the reason we're here really, and not just at the town, is that the village green is what Mike is suggesting in the village property. And so we wanted permission from the select board and from the village wanted to work on your property. Uh, some things we might not re require, although I think it's, it's good to have cooperation over this and, and understanding and kind of a general okay. So. Being a fourth member on a beautification committee, uh, I would like to just get a, a nod from the fellow trustees. Uh, permission to to match the town with a thousand dollars out of their twenty five hundred dollars for Andrew's work, which is what nineteen nineteen fifty. So it'd be a fifty fifty split. And having met with Andrea about three times now, when she does plant, she said she would be willing to do the maintenance. And she said when she does plant, that was a big priority of hers, just wanted to put something in the ground that does not require too much maintenance. Mm -hmm. There'd be a little bit of trimming and dressing up the following year, but she said that's one of her one of her high priorities. And the village does have two hundred fifty dollars dedicated to the uh, welcome signs coming in out of town. And Meredith has been working with Linda Hill on. Linda has been willing to volunteer or donate some of her time and maybe material, right? Mm -hmm. So that was another option to throw on a table. And that's for painting. For painting, okay. Oh, yeah. And I took it upon myself that this forty dollars less of the twenty five hundred because before the Memorial Day weekend I wanted flowers in front of the fire station, so I 
that's an issue I'll take up with my fellow trustees at another meeting. But and also I think some of the beautification committee knows, but I don't know if they've had a chance to see the plans. But when I met with Andrea out front, she has a, a nice vision. She can see things differently than especially me. But she's got a nice like, some ideas for the monument, the flagpole, redoing it all. And also redoing a generator, the mound system out here with a generator and the, the signs are for a village in town. And then she's got kind of a tentative master plan for the whole building, but it would not be this year. But the beautification, beautification committee did want some kind of a plan instead of people just sticking flowers and bushes in the ground at random. So we haven't had a chance to discuss that, but she's even got a walkway to the monuments, the veterans monuments out front and other things. So she's done a lot of work on her own time, hasn't charged a penny, and I commend her for it. But so uh, that's where we're at. At some point, we need another meeting beautification to uh, get things moving. And just to follow up on that, um, with the idea of there maybe being a longer term master plan for this building, I think that. We need to be mindful of that if we're going to invest in perennials for this building. You know, if they're going to get ripped out next year, maybe we do something, maybe some more annuals this year in pots mm -hmm. if there's going to be a bigger project next year here. Um, and it would also be, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the cold spring. Um, that came up at the last Johnson <coughs> Works meeting. I got a lot of feedback from people who are unhappy with the weeds. Um, I've had a few conversations with Peter Moynihan who's expressed that to really clean up the cold spring, he could spend days and days there, and that would be a big budget eater. Um, so I'm wanting to get sort of consensus that out of this thirty thousand or three thousand dollars that we're going to have for gardening, that we allot some amount of time just to do some basic weeding to clean it up a little bit, but not spend a lot of money there to really make it substantially better. You know, is everybody on board with that. Um, Sounds like a priorities for the welcome science municipal building and the bridge boxes, but I do think we need to spend a little bit just to clean it up there because I have gotten some negative feedback about it. Everybody on board with that? Not a big budget eater, but sometime. On our side, I, 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 from the town perspective, again, I would defer to yep. ask the beautification committee if for that if they are good for it. Yeah, if they have other priorities, then no. I mean, if it's just cleanup, maybe volunteers could do something like that. I mean, we're just at that point. I mean, if it's routine. Uh, I'm, I'm going to interrupt this for just a second. Uh, I see two <coughs> articles here, at least one of which appears to me at least to be a, a time consuming one. And uh, could I suggest that we defer on further discussion of the. 2019 gardening plan until we've taken care of articles four and five and come back to them. Any objection to that? Yeah. <coughs> Article four. Joint employee framework. Sorry, I, I can't hear you. I'm a little unclear of what just happened. What just happened was we were continue, we will continue to discuss the gardening plan, but we'll do it after we've taken up the next two okay. articles, okay. unless there's a vigorous objection. Are we are we are we done with I gardening? Think no. we're done. I think we're done. We should all nod and say it's fine. Okay. I think we should have this yeah, conversation on March next year. Good. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's not like always move to the uh, morning to come back to the garden. I think we're all set. <laughs> Just the only thing to throw out quickly is there's two select board members on a beautification committee and because we're working together, maybe. Maybe there's room for one more trustee to work on a committee. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> Somebody retired? <coughs> it would be nice to have another member. So we'd love to have <coughs> That's the that. Okay. Okay. Item four. Who's, who's on first? Uh, I can take this one. Uh, so the, the over the years, the town and the village have gone back and forth about um, how to manage joint employees and uh, share property and everything else. Um, and recently, there's been kind of a renewal.
renewed interest about should we have joint employees or with you know at this point we have relatively few joint employees would it make more sense to uh, eliminate the joint employees and just have you know sole employees and uh, an MOU or something memorandum of understanding or something that, that allows our employees to share tasks so, so that the office can still function um, but that's going to be kind of a complicated a, a fairly complicated question so for Meredith and I uh, to invest our time in this we really would like the boards to direct us to do something like that uh, you don't have to agree now that we're definitely going to split up the employees but we would want to have um, enough interest in the boards to investigate this for us to spend the time with it. It's probably going to take some attorney time. Uh, it might require a human resources specialist uh, and it'll require a decent amount of our staff time. Yeah, um, so just so everybody baseline information, uh, how many joint employees do we have? It's like three, four, two, two, two. Um, what I would suggest for those two employees is whoever has the easiest lift, or you know, we can put them in the top priority to try to figure out how to unravel all that and develop an MOU. So if somebody comes into the town village offices, they get their needs met, and they don't have a staffer saying, no, that's village, and they're not in, so I can't help you. That's the worst thing that I could possibly conceive walking into a public office. Yeah, we, we so would absolutely have to nail that before we committed to any change. Right. So for this type of question for us, the time that you think would be needed either by doing a one, two, like priority thing or do just since it's only two, doing both of them, how much time do you think you would need? And I guess that would involve the MOU and lawyer time and everything else. What time? What kind of time commitment are we looking at? Our time might be relatively low, but I really don't know what the lawyer is going to come back with for something like this. It, it's uh, no. it, it, yeah. I mean, it's it could be as little as maybe. 25 to 30 hours, you know, for each of us, perhaps. But in addition to the two joint employees, we do have two shared um, elected officials. So we do need to figure out, you know, an MOU somehow or some way to split up their time as well, even though they're not joint employees, and we have to pick, figure that piece out as well. So um, for the, sh go ahead. the shared elected officials, would that have to go through the state? through any kind of That's something review. that I have no idea. We have okay. to think about it. Yeah. All right. the, the problem with coming up <laughs> with a document of understanding on, like Rosemary, she's elected. We don't have any authority over her. Right. Um, she has uh, statutory duties that she's responsible for, and Jan, or if Jan retires, her replacement, serves at the pleasure of Rosemary, again, not under our jurisdiction. So we probably don't even have to worry about any document understanding between between us for them to. Just in terms of pay and benefits of how those would be allocated. allocated. Yeah. How did we use to do that? It's not working now. Uh, what we've been doing, as far as I know, is that it's I kind of unstated agreement that I don't believe we I don't believe it's written down or formally accepted anywhere, but it's a for uh, Rosemary and Jan, I believe it's a 60 40 split. Uh, but I don't know that that's based on any, I don't know what that's based on or how we arrive at that. I just, I was just wondering what, what isn't working now that you would go through all the expense to change it? It's, with our employee, with any employee, it's, the chain of command is very difficult uh, because they are not responsible 
ultimately to any one person or one even one chain of command. So it, it, it's uh, a little bit murky and, and uh, a little bit difficult and can lead to some some tension and some disagreements about how to handle one situation or another. So it would, you know, each each group, the town and the village would be giving up some of its authority, but they would also be relieved of responsibility. Uh, and is that something that the boards want? How we got here was Gordy, probably the only one that remembers this, besides myself, is we we had separate employees eons ago. And it came to a point where we had so many employees in the office that were had shared responsibilities between the town and the village that we developed shared uh, employees. One of the problems we had back then and it was a lot of work of the two boards, is to get everybody uh, or every employee on the same pay scale between the town and village because they were being paid separately. Their pay raises would be coming at different times. And so it, there was a lot of work to get that all an agreed upon salary amount and, and the salary increases would be and all of that. Um, and back in that, day we had four shared employees because we had Duncan and, and Leia and uh, of course now we're down to two shared employees and then recently the, the trustees granted a salary adjustment to one of the shared employees so it's only a portion of her salary that's adjusted and not her whole salary uh, for the 40 hours. So we've been kicking this can back and forth for a number of years, and that sort of brought it to light again. It's like, okay, well, you guys want to make an adjustment. You could do it. You could make it, make her, the employee whole, and uh, if it's just a village employee. I was just going to ask for the record. So there's, there's two shared employees. What percentage of their time is for each? 80, 20, 60, 40. Yep. Hmm? Is it 80, 20 or 80? Uh, and which directions are those numbers though? Susan is 80% village, Okay. 20% town. And Anne is 40% village, 60% town. Okay. Well, it's not that far off from this. to Kim, the, I think the, the issue besides pay is a question of who well, they're answerable to. Yeah, that you made that clear. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> so the guidance you're looking for? <laughs> do you want us to do a more, more thorough investigation of this? Uh, do you want us to commence with this? Do you want us to come back and give you a better estimate of how long we think it'll take? Um, or do you think that it's not really worth it? Enough? I think the 80% employee that's paid 80% by the village should be a 100% village employee. So I'm guessing, from you, Mike, you're saying we should ask Brian to. Is that sort of the consensus of the board? That we should look into exploring? My, big, my, my issue would be. Uh, responsibility and discipline and things like that because I, I think this clarification of who's the boss and where the hats are is, is, is bad. You know? um, <clears throat> the, uh, nevertheless, I think that we will get to a point where we will, 
they seem to be in one office and the pay scale and the pay differential will come up again. You know? it, it will become not, you know, we perceive this being unjust between various people, you know, these two employees, when they may have an inherent idea there, there maybe should be some balance. So I, I don't know how we address that. I actually think we should go forward with separating it out with town taking responsibility, having with, uh, with, with the employee that's the majority of part of our time, and making certain that there's a memorandum of understanding that uh, the village pays X for the time that, you know, that, uh, that certain amount of their time is allocated to that. So when people come to the window, they are served. Um, when are you done, Doug? I'm done. I just want to agree with what Doug had just said and, and actually what Mike has just said. I think it would be cleaner if we could separate the two employees so that one board will be, will be discussing the wages for each employee for their own job descriptions and you know for the personnel that they're responsible for and then uh, I think that then if there's any actions taken or anything from any employees or the managers or the the ten of us here it would be separated I think it'd be cleaner and it'd be easier for us and hopefully it would be easier for the employees so is there anyone who is would be opposed to asking these two folks at the ends of the table with looking into this and giving you some you recommendations or ideas. This is almost like the merger study. <laughs> I just had to throw that out. I don't think we need to go here because we're just going to ask them to look into it. Yeah. Study that sounds fine to me. Sounds like a consensus of the board. I, you guys agree? Yeah. 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 I, I feel like this is, I, I went through this afternoon uh, <laughs> minutes of uh, joint uh, trustee select board meetings. Um, it was really fun. Uh, one thing that I found uh, a couple of times over and over again was. Um, we have similar meetings where we come to a, a point where we have an intent to do something and then it gets completely lost. And I could bring up real specific examples of like, we decided we were gonna do this and it never got brought up again. So let's bring this up every month and like at our each individual meeting as a topic, as a separate individual topic and make sure we follow through with this because um, we don't have a great track record of following through on these, on these decisions. He or she will make up the agenda. Don't get discussed and don't get on the agenda. Um, thanks. I'm asking that it be put on all agendas until, <laughs> until it gets uh, resolved. Good point. Thanks for well, the reminder. What else do we have on that? <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. So for the trustees side of the house, um, I don't, I'll let the select board ask the same question maybe to Brian. Uh, for timing, because I know Meredith, you have a very busy schedule with some stuff that's going on within the village. Realistically, what kind of time can you find to do this over the next month or two? The next month. Um, well, for the powerhouse building, I don't think, so I just signed the contract today. Um, they now need to do a demolition plan to submit to EPA, so I think there's going to be about a month window there while EPA is reviewing that plan and waiting for it to be accepted. Um, the uh, Pearl Street Bridge project, uh, sidewalk project um, should be manageable, so I think in the next month I could spend some time on it. Yeah, that's doable. I think that's fair for me too. That, uh, uh, I'd say the early part of July looks pretty good on my schedule uh, for time to commit to something like this. So I think Merritt and I can try and coordinate our schedules a little bit. I think that it's going to be probably an initial meeting or two and then hand, us handing it off for what, you know, an, an attorney to help us work through the MOU and uh, some of the other issues. So I don't think it's going to be a ton of our time. I think it's a little bit at the beginning and a little bit at the end. Um, overall, I, I hope that your 20, 25 hours is 
Sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and I think that I can make time for that in my schedule early July also. Okay. Could you sign first? I just hope that we can work it out so that I know that the office help will try to do their best, but I just don't want a customer coming in and having somebody drop their head down there. That's village. Right. Oh, I don't want to do it. That's the biggest thing that I can see. And and if there's anything that I hate is to go into an office and, and not someone pay attention. And Agreed. This was just to Brian to keep the attorney down to a minimum. <laughs> Okay, municipal building repairs. Okay. So the it's that time of year we're looking for another siting update. Um, as for your directions from last year, uh, we put the document out to bid uh, so that we can get other solicitations. Um, that was. You saw a draft of it. It was a little bit late getting out from the draft, so the time had to be extended. So we weren't receiving those uh, by tonight. We're going to receive them by next Monday. Um, with that said, it would be nice if we could at least get an agreement that if we don't receive any bids other than Stanley, if Meredith and I might have the power to award it to Stanley. Um, again, just in the event that there are no alternatives. For something like this kind of request, I would look for a motion. So moved. Motion, we have a second. Second. Okay, it's still for discussion. Can I ask consent? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those both. Nee. Okay. Well, but he wouldn't have got. He would have got. Would not have gotten unanimous consent. So better put it to a vote. Just to uh, counter what Eric has just made for his, or accepted for his motion, I will entertain the, the uh, same motion for the village side. To if there are no other bids that come in before next Monday, that Brian and Meredith have the authority to uh, award the bid so that he can plan his summer work. You have that is motion. Okay. Motion from Scott, seconded by Bob. All those in favor of the motion, signify the an aye. Aye. Those opposed? I was going to bring up a point of discussion, if we can, to Doug's point. Um, is this that we will grant it to Stanley, or that we may grant it to Stanley? May. May. May, aren't you done? Yep. <laughs> Mike, make it abundantly clear in his motion <laughs> that I seconded. Yeah. <laughs> you got that correct. Well, that would be pretty well, foolish if you came in with a bid for $100,000 for just this side and we okayed the whole thing. Yes, I do. So it's in May. We're, you're going to get back to us. You might define the order of, anyway. And, <laughs> yeah, Doug's point was that if the bid comes back out of line, to get like not what we're expecting this to be. We're expecting it to be around thirty-five thousand. Uh, if it's not what we're expecting, then we wouldn't necessarily award it to Stanley either. Exactly. Uh, so I, I think he said that he anticipates it to be similar to last year's costs, which I believe all told were. I'm like, did I say forty-six or fifty-six? I have it in an email. I can tell you what we actually spent last year. Um, it was higher. I know on the village side it was higher than I think it was fifty six thousand is what it ended up being last year because we budgeted twenty five um, so if it was fifty six thousand again this year we would be over budget by three thousand um, dollars so just wanted to throw that out there it went over because they found some other difficulties yes that absolutely that we yep. did not yep. this this last phase are we done hopefully I uh, think there's a question about the tower. Yeah. Um, whether or not we can afford that this year. You know, if just the main walls is 56000 then that eats up our entire budget plus what we had budgeted for the okay. sidewalk out front. Okay. Um, so that, I think, would mean the tower has to wait, unfortunately. 
That, that's all I was going to echo is that there's a strong possibility that the tower is not going to be included this year. Um, it, it's just everything so far has been more expensive than we thought it was going to be. We think that this year has more area. We think that there's going to be less uh, unexpected expenses because this side of the building has more sun exposure. So we don't think we're going to find as much, uh, you know, trapped water and rock. But you know, we don't have a good tracker. When you say we might not get the tower, what about the patch job that was done up there? We have to follow up with that also. Uh, and that is going to depend. What we do there is going to depend on how much of the rest of the tower are we going to do. Uh, if, you, if everybody recalls, we had a lot of water inside uh, the hallway here uh, during the winter. And that was from a uh, segment of the roof where the two parts of the roof are, are pitched together. Uh, and which is a bad idea already and it doesn't feel very well. Uh, so it traps and infiltrates a great deal of water into our attic cavity. Uh, we're losing a lot of heat through that area and yeah, it, it, it's going to be another spot of rot and other concerns. If we can redo the tower, we can try and tackle that with a more permanent solution. If we can't redo the tower this year, it's probably going to, but we absolutely should do something to, even if we don't permanently remedy that, we don't want to go through another winter uh, in the state it's in. But we are not taking on water during regular rain and normal weather events. I think it was a combination of uh, enough ice being there to kind of force things apart and a lot of water being present to take advantage of that. Um, and we did uh, some emergency patches to get us through the winter. So it's in a stable state right now. So. Mm -hmm. Rip it out. Anything else on building repair? So I, I don't think Stanley is anticipating giving us a separate bid. I think what we're getting from him is he's estimated it's going to be about what it was last year. Um, so I'm getting back to the May versus. <laughs> Will, I, I don't think we're going to get any additional information that, we'll, that we don't have right now from him before we have to make a decision to approve it or not. But you are getting other bids. Sorry? But you are getting other bids. If, if we, yeah, if, I mean, if, if we, we do get other bids. If we do get other bids. You're, putting, that, you're putting out for yeah. that yeah. Place. Yeah. If we get other bids, okay. we'll, we'll bring them to the board for discussion. If we don't get other bids and we feel that, the, that Stanley's cost estimates are reasonable and fair and in line with what we've been spending on this, we'd like to go ahead and award the, the contract. Uh, we are hoping to get it started as soon as possible. We ever have a summer. <laughs> Last chance to go back to the garden plan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to shoehorn something. May, may I shoehorn something to the garden? Now is the time. Um, it was hot. We've, uh, in response to Emerald Ashbor, um, which is in neighboring counties now, very likely here, uh, we've started talking to our highway department about a uh, preemptive cutting plan for, um, especially along municipal properties. Um, and there's ash out here. There's also ash on um, Lenway Lane that um, if we could start preemptively cutting would be great, but I'd like to get the um, permission of the trustees before we start doing that with the, on the um, shared land that we own out there. I guess my question is, do you have any problem if we start preemptively cutting ash on jointly owned property? The only concern I have 
for cutting trees down. If they are in our power right away, that you please let Troy know because Absolutely. that's a certified cutter that has to do that type of work. Absolutely. Yeah. I would just ask, and I don't know if this is at all possible, um, so the wood stays here, is there any way we could get that for the pizza oven? Mm -hmm. If there's any way. I don't know if the town could drop it somewhere where then uh, volunteers could cut it and bring it to the oven. I'm mean, happy to stack it at my house, but I'm not going to say I'm going to cut six cords of wood. <laughs> well, it's going to be 2,500 trees. Sure. That's what right. I estimate. Is that something, I mean, who would I contact about that? Right now, if we're talking about just right. just trees that are in the town and village owned right. properties, okay. you would ask us, and I think as far as I'm concerned, sounds like a great idea. Cool. We yeah, haven't talked to Brian uh, Krause. However, it, if it's on someone's property, they get first dibs on it, correct? Correct. But this is yeah. That's true. Okay. Talking only about municipal okay. Okay. owned property. Right now. Yeah. Uh, and just from a liability and legal standpoint, I think what we would what we would probably want to do is give the trees away. That, so we're, your volunteers, they wouldn't be coming on the town property to cut them up or, or do anything else, but they would be, uh, depending on conditions, they might be able to drop them off someplace or they might need to be picked up, but the, okay. the town wouldn't get involved in uh, you know, cutting up the trees. So if I had a drop location, then we could probably figure that out. I expect so. Uh, oh. we're, we can work with Brian on that. That'd be great, yeah. Just a budget question. Is this, where are the funding for this category? Where is this coming from for this tree cutting? And Good question. Out of the highway, one of your budgets? Yeah. We didn't really budget for it, but yep. we got to do it. In, in, in highway right away, I would presume that would be coming from the highway budget. Right. Yeah. I think it's I think it's gonna be something that we we have a little we have our regular amount of you know money for this kind of project this year. But I think in future years it's gonna be ramping up for how much we have to spend on this. Uh, that this is yeah, Emerald Ice Force here, so it's gonna get pretty expensive over the next few years. Okay. Thank you, Nat, for asking. Thank you. Magic motion in order. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Select board of duty. And the village? Bob made a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, signify an aye. Aye. Good night. Thank you both for all your hard work. Thank you.